Hey everybody, Tim Schetz here again with C4D Training. Today I have a little tutorial on using multiple cameras in your scene and how to switch between them. So first I'm going to show you a little example of something I put together here. So here I have a city setup. I use the CityGen plugin for Cinema 4D. And if I rotate around here, you can see I also have a car in my scene and I've created a spline for it that it's going to drive along. And to my car I've added the align to spline tag and in my tag I've dropped my car path as you can see here. So that's my spline, I just dragged it and dropped it into this align to spline tag. So now if I select my align to spline tag and I move the position my car drives along my path. All I have to do to animate my car is animate the position of the Align to Spline tag. So I'm going to go ahead and animate my car. So I have my time indicator down here at the first frame. And I'm going to go ahead and control click on the position for the Align to Spline tag. Then I'm going to move my indicator down to 90. Put this up to 100% and control click again to create a keyframe for the final position. So now if I rewind this and play, there goes my car driving along its path, it turns the corner up there, there we go. So now I want to go ahead and set up some cameras. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my view here. Get a little bit better view of the city. go. And now if I scrub my timeline, there goes my car driving by. Okay, that's a pretty good angle. Car takes a little while to come into view. It takes almost a full 10 frames. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is change my first keyframe for the position of the align to spline tag. So increase that to 4, see what happens. So control click on it, control click on it again. So that looks good there, car going by. So let's go ahead and add our first camera. So come down here and go to camera. I'm going to go ahead and call that camera one just so we can keep track since we'll have multiple cameras. All right, so now let's go ahead and find our place for our second camera. So let's zoom out here a little bit. I'm going to come around this way. This looks like a good place down here. Don't want to be sitting inside the building. Maybe have a piece of this building kind of over here in the corner. So if I scrub my timeline, there goes my car driving by. So that's pretty good. I think I'll go ahead and put a camera here. And I'll call that one camera two. All right, so now we'll go ahead and put find a place for our third camera. So come up here above the city, we'll rotate around, and maybe we'll come down. Okay, we'll come down here, and maybe from kind of over in this little courtyard area over here. And now if I scrub, we'll see the car come around the corner. So we'll go ahead and add a camera here. There we go. And I'm going to call that camera three. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and find our location for our last camera. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom out here. And maybe we'll just... have the car kind of come at us. Now if I scrub this down, and there goes the car by. There it goes. 
those. All right, so that, that looks good for our fourth camera. So I'm going to go ahead and add the camera. Call that camera four. All right, so now if we switch through our cameras by turning on this little icon here, there's camera one, which is the one that we want at the beginning. And there goes our car by. And then we have camera two. And then the car will speed by here. And then we switch to camera three as the camera comes around the corner. And then we switch to camera four as it drives by. So now we just have to see how to switch those cameras. Well, the way we do that is we go up here and we add a stage object. And click on our stage object, and I'm going to go ahead and make this window a little bit bigger here. And there's a window here in the object section it's called camera. And that's where we're going to drop our camera. So here at the beginning, we set our time indicator back at the beginning, and we drag our camera one in because that's the one that we want to start with. We go ahead and control click on the little dot to create a keyframe for that. And so now movie starts and we are in camera one. So now we figure out about where we want camera two to come in. And I think that's going to be around frame 34, 35. That's what I said. Yeah, there's, there's 34. So maybe we do it at frame 32. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to the frame 32. I'm going to go ahead and drag my camera 2 and replace camera 1 and now there's no keyframe there so we go ahead and control click that and so now we switch to camera 2 at that frame so the car comes down and we switch to the next camera and then we do the same thing with the next one so let's turn on camera 3 and look there's our car coming there that's actually a really great place so I'm going to go ahead and drag camera 3 and replace camera 2 and again control click on the little dot to add a keyframe Then we come down we're going to let that kind of go past a little bit and then I think we're going to go ahead and switch to camera 4 so we'll drag camera 4 in there replace it again control click for the keyframe so now if I go ahead and scrub through this here goes my car and we switch cameras and we come down and we switch cameras again it comes around the corner and then the final view of the car driving by. So that's all there is to it. We just we put in the cameras that we want, we get them in the locations that we want, and then we use the stage object to switch between our cameras, keyframing the changes in cameras. So sometimes you'll want those cuts to be a little smoother. If that's the case, you don't really have control over that with the stage object. So instead what I would recommend doing is going ahead and rendering for our first camera, we have we go from 0 to 30, and perhaps what I would actually do is leave it on camera 1 and render through, say, frame 40, and then switch to camera 2 and go ahead and render off from, you know, frame 28 to 50 or something like that, and kind of overlap them a little bit, and then when you bring them into After Effects or Final Cut or Premiere, whatever you're using for editing, you can then create some transitions between them and perhaps have a little overlap. There's really no way to overlap with the stage object in Cinema 4D, but it still is useful for making cuts. Well, that's about it for this week. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Tim Schetz with C4D Training. Take care.